Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence, and in today's video, I am going to show you how to create a single future dependence plot. In the next video, I'll show you how to create a two future dependence plot, and the video after that, I'll show you how to create a three future dependence plot. But in today's video, I'll just start with single future dependence block so begin to begin let's go ahead and install things that we'll need and this exclamation mark basically says to do shell command inside a notebook i'm gonna hit shift enter to execute the cell and while this is running i'll quickly go over what is partial dependence plot so this right here is kind of like the best way I have found to explain it PD plot or PDP partial dependence plot shows the marginal effect one or two futures have on the predicted outcome of a machine learning model a partial dependence plot can show whether the relationship between the target and a future is linear monotonic or more complex and when you apply PDP to a linear regression model, it almost always shows a linear relationship. So basically, in a nutshell, PDP plots show how dependent or like kind of show the relationship between a target and a future. So this is done installing. Actually, I wanted to do capture. Capture basically stops this. If I run this next time, all of this won't print out. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and import some things. So from PDP box dot PDP import PDP isolate. Alright, let's just go ahead and import all of this. And I've already cleaned the data so I have my xtrend.head and this is a life expectancy data and basically the target in this data set is the life expectancy and as you can see right here we have categorical variable in the status column so we need to encode this categorical variable into integers and everything else is integers all right and I also have my S test data set. So I've already gone ahead and do the data cleaning, the data preparation, and then split my data into X train and S test. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's go ahead and build our model. So PDP is a technique that you use to help you explain your models after you've built it so I'll begin by building a model so build random forest model from sklearn.ensemble import random forest regressor and here I'm going to be using a pipeline to build my model like in a different video I go into detail of how to create a pipeline but in this video, I'll just um, use the pipeline, but I want to go into detail of explaining it. So from sklearn.pipeline, import make pipeline. So now let's just call this forest equal to make pipeline. And I want the ordinal encoding. So I also need to import my encoder. So import category encoders as uh, CE. So before I did this earlier in this notebook, I did this EIP install category encoders so I already have category encoders installed in my notebook but if you're working um, 
in your own environment in your own notebook make sure you have category encoders installed before you try to do this and if you don't have category encoders installed you won't be able to import it and you won't be able to use it for the encoding so let's say ce.1 hot encoder and then random forest regressor and adjust the random state equal to 42 and then leave all the variables as they are so let's go ahead and fit our model so forest the fit we want to fit our x train and then we want to fit our y train Alright, and here the encoding process was applied to the model first before the random forest. And like I said in a different video, I go over pipelines if you need to see that. So now that we have fit our model, this is where we get to the form part. <laughs> so let's call it PDP, why not? And we want to identify what future we would like to look at this is a single future dependent plot like i said earlier and in a different video i will do a two future dependent plot so isolated is equal to pdp isolate and here we we define the model so as you can see like the first thing is what the model was the data set to do the PDP plot on and um, was the model features which is what's the model columns and which future should we be working with so basically the model the trained model the data sets to apply the PDP plot on the columns of the from the model the column of interest the single column that that's a single feature we are interested in plotting and then you have other parameters so let's go ahead and start defining this and actually i want to add one more let's just do s test here so basically i'll provide what my s test is so model is equal to forest. Actually, I can do this just. That's the thing about the function. You can add as many variables as possible. So I want my model to be model because I'm kind of building this in a way that I could like easily import it and use it somewhere else. So the model is model. Um, all right model is model then data set we want to apply this pdp to is the test data the model futures is equal to test data dot columns and then the future we want to be working with is equal to uh, future and maybe rename this um, to make it easier for you to remember what this means future of interest and I may delete this but I'm just gonna leave it there for now all right and then one more parameter number of grid points is equal to 50. after we run this the first time i'm gonna come back here and change the number of grid points so you can of see how um, it changes the resulting data basically this is how many points you want on the graph but i'll show you that here in a second so basically this right here is also defining the isolated feature and now this is the point where we actually plot it 
is a PDP plot and we want to plot isolated right and future name is equal to future of interest and then you can leave all the other defaults to true if you want to or you can add more stuff and then we want to do plt.x limit um, let's do the x limit plt.title the title that I, I already defined plt.y label y label and then plt.x label x label So in a nutshell, that's basically how you create um, the function that to do a single future PDP plot. And as you can see right here, I kept using PMPLT. So this PLT is from Matplotlib. I already have Matplotlib in this environment, but if in case you don't, what you do is do from, you do import Matplotlib as PLT. And if you want to define the size of your graph then you might do something like from map plot live the pipe plot import figure and then you do something like um, figure fix size is a got this is example 10 by 10 so basically you can use um, this syntax right here to control the size of your figure of your graph but I don't want this I just want the default and I already imported this earlier and I already have this here earlier so that's why I'm able to use PLT so if you see PLT it's coming from Matplotlib so let me go ahead and run this code so now let's go ahead and call our function right let's call it PDP and now let's enter things. So let's say we are interested in the HIV AIDS column. So if I go ahead here and do x train dot columns. So these are the columns that we are interested in. This, are, this is the column from our training data. So let's just pick um, HIV AIDS as the column of interest. And we can like pick other columns as times go by. And then this data is gonna be our S test. Our model is gonna be forest. And then we want to provide the title, title, and then and Y label. And then X label. So that's that's basically. It. Let's go ahead and run this. So basically, this is our single future dependence plot of life expectancy and HIV AIDS. And this is what I mean by points. These circles are points. And let's just go ahead and change it to one hundred, so you can get an idea of what I mean. As you can see, now that we've changed it to 100, there's more of these points on here. But um, basically, what this graph is kind of showing, kind of like a, well, it kind of like decrease, 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 right? It's kind of levels off a little bit here, but then sharp decrease, and then decrease, and then levels off. So the life expectancy is dramatically decreased by, let's say, eight years or nine years, about eight years here, if uh, the death by a thousand per a thousand people is between zero and two, and then it shows us like the life expectancy is even decreased. So basically, if like the life, if like there's ten death per a thousand people then the life expectancy even decreases more 
by negative 15. So this is showing like a decrease in life expectancy as um, the number of deaths per 1,000 people increases. And we can also try out another feature with our single feature dependence plot. So if I go ahead and copy this and put it down here and let's change this to schooling maybe. And let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see right here, this kind of cuts off, but I can fix that. Let's go ahead and change our X limit. Let's go ahead and um, number of years in school, change this to school PDP. All right. And then let's do X limit equal to None. All right. Now let's go down run this. All right. And we have too many points on this. Kind of makes it a bit difficult to see. So I'll go back here and change this to 50. Run this. Go back down and run this. All right. So this looks a lot better now. If the number of schooling that the person have you know the, if like the average number of years in school is between zero and nine there's actually a decrease in life expectancy but once the number of years spent in school gets to about 9.5 slash 10 all the way to 17.5 years spent in school it kind of shows like an increase in life expectancy and then if the number of years spent in school continues from there, like if the number of years spent in school is 17.5 and above, then just doesn't have that much impact or that much difference in the life expectancy kind of like levels of it becomes monotonic. So we here we have a decrease in life expectancy increase in life expectancy and then a monotonic relationship it kind of levels off so you can kind of use pdp plot to kind of visualize the relationships between your target future and a future of interest in a nutshell that is how you do a single future dependence plot and i'm gonna take this right here and, and i'm also going to add it um, here so that when you get access to this notebook you'll be able to read it yourself and learn more about single future dependence plots or just dependence plots in general and you can get this notebook by going to machinelearningeducation.com this is where i have all my free data science resources so if you click on this it will take you to this page and this is machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And this is where I have all my free data science resources. So this notebook that I use in today's video and other notebooks and my YouTube videos and my blog posts, I just find it easier to take all that information and put it right here inside this blog, inside this platform. And you can also find me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs. And as time goes by, I'm going to add more and more stuff to my data science blog. And you can click on free data science resources. So you also be able to get to this page. And again, this notebook is going to be in here inside this platform. That's it for today's video. Be on the lookout for two future dependence plot next week or on the next upload. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.